Siddhartha, o seu livro, é, O Gene, traz em um dos capítulos uma, uma história pessoal, né, da história familiar sua é, relacionada a doenças mentais. Né? E, e se a gente for pegar outras doenças, como o câncer, a, a, a hereditariedade também tem o seu papel, de 5% a 10%, essa predisposição hereditária. É, o quanto é importante é, o conhecimento sobre as síndromes hereditárias, mas também que a população de todo mundo é, que tem a indicação tenha acesso aos painéis, a, ao teste genético, ao aconselhamento? Well, of course, in general, um, I think it's important. It's become more important now. So about uh, ten, five years ago, um, the chances that you would get a genetic test and get something useful out of that genetic test, if you did not have quite unusual or rare diseases, um, the, the genetic tests were not very useful. Um, we are slowly finding out that um, genetic tests can be useful in the medical setting. I'll give you an example, I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, one example is uh, the history of uh, heart disease. Um, it turns out that um, for the last five or six years, um, doing, the, you know, doing a genetic test to figure out if you had a higher risk of, uh, of uh, uh, coronary disease, this is disease that, that causes heart attacks, um, was not very useful. But now, using new methods uh, that, that have been developed in the lab, um, we can predict your risk of coronary disease uh, and the future risk of having a heart attack using not one gene, but really hundreds, if not thousands of genes, each of which contributes a little bit of risk. But if you accumulate them all together, uh, all the variants together, you can now really get a sense of risk. That's true for uh, some diseases. Uh, I give you one example, uh, heart attacks. A second example is breast cancer. So uh, again, um, there were patients with, um, um, obviously there's some genes that increase the risk of breast cancer, uh, genes like BRCA1 and BRCA2, but there were many women who had neither mutations or changes in BRCA1 or BRCA2 but who had a high risk of breast cancer. Um, and this was a big question for the medical field. Why do they have a high risk of breast cancer? And we now know that part of that risk, not all of it, but part of it is because of genetics. And much like heart disease, it's not one gene, but small risks that accumulate over uh, uh, many genes, hundreds if not thousands of genes. So I would say that um, we are making progress in the usefulness of genetic tests beyond just uh, unusual and rare diseases into much more common diseases such as heart attacks and, um, and breast cancer. Um, I should also say that there have been now multiple projects trying to figure out um, whether you, you can predict uh, your risk of developing severe COVID infection based on genetic sequencing uh, of, of yourself of patients. Um, and thus far, nothing has really stood out um, except for a um, couple of studies. One Dutch study, um, which had very few uh, patients, these Dutch investigators um, took uh, young brothers, brother pairs. Um, so families in which two young brother pairs both developed very severe COVID. Um, as you can imagine, that's very unusual because generally speaking, um, young men or, and women, but young people in general don't tend to develop severe COVID. So they looked through their hospital databases and found two families in which they had two brothers living separately and both the brothers developed very severe. They were both young, under 35. Uh, and both the brothers developed severe COVID. In fact, one of them died, one of the four died uh, of COVID. And they sequenced the genes. And surprisingly, they found that there was one gene that seems to be uh, altered or mutated in all four of these individuals. The chance, chance that, that that happens by pure chance alone is very low. 
And this gene is, in fact, related. It's an immune system gene. So, um, and, in, and has been previously shown to um, have a relationship between our capacity to be resistant to uh, viral infections. So, uh, these kinds of projects are very informative because they can tell us, um, they can identify patients who are at higher risk for developing severe COVID, that's one. But more importantly, they can illuminate or tell us how the immune system's reaction to COVID can guide us towards therapies, what therapies we need. And in fact, some of the therapies that, that people are developing around the world, in fact, some of the therapies that we are developing uh, in the lab are is based on these insights um, from these genetic studies.